Library. Today's program will begin momentarily. Supported by Verso Studios. Created locally and shared with the world. Hi, everybody. I'm Carol Erger Fass, exhibit curator here at the library. And I want to welcome everybody to tonight's talk on Scheherazade's Storyteller, Mixed Media Works by award winning artist Camille Eskel. Do you guys want to come on and make yourselves comfortable? <laughs> Camille is a first-generation American born to a Middle Eastern Iraqi Jewish family from Mumbai, and her art examines her cultural history and her family's heritage through a uniquely feminist lens. Through her art, Camille unearths the influences of patriarchal systems and inequitable gender traditions that per persist across generations. This exhibit is part of a larger series called The Fez at Storyteller, which includes mixed media sculptures and two dimensional um, pieces. Her work is very personable, personal, and it combines elements and cultural symbols from uh, Middle Eastern, South Asian, and Sephardic traditions. She often uses the Fez cap, traditionally a male headgear, in her storytelling. Both of her grandfathers manufactured and sold fez caps in Mumbai, where her parents were raised. And so they've become an apt metaphor to weave into her work and to help her tell her stories. The crafting of each piece is meticulous and integrates a range of materials and techniques. Digital photo-based collage, textiles, handmade paper, sculpture, trims, and jewels, which she disassembles and reworks, often with hand sewing and beading and more. Camille exhibits her work extensively in solo and group shows throughout the US and abroad, including Mexico and South America. Her works in numerous public and private collections, such as the Hudson River Museum, the Chrysler Museum of Art, and the Housatonic Museum of Art. She received an Artist Fellowship grant from the New York Foundation for the Arts and also from the Connecticut Commission on the Arts. And she's been written up in numerous publications, including the New York Times, Connecticut Post, and the Hartford Current. She's had artist residencies at Weir Farm and the Vermont Studio Center. And more locally, although not listed in your official bio, she was also an art teacher at Staples High School. And we have all the students today. <laughs> So also, she's inspired a whole new generation of Westport artists. And special thanks to Migs Burroughs, our interviewer for tonight, and our art team, and our library crew for bringing this all together, and also to the uh, Drew Friedman Community Arts Center for uh, their continuing support of our arts program at the library. Oh. Thanks, girl. Hi, Camille. I think it's on. It's Try it. I think it's on. Yeah, yeah, you're good. <laughs> so I've always wanted to do a red carpet interview, so I have to ask, who are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> who am I wearing? Um, it's Johnny Was. Johnny Was is the name of the oh, company. Really? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> is it hand embroidered? Is it uh, one of the? Probably in China. Oh. But um, I'm a big consignment person, so every most of my clothes are on consignment. So I'm giving them a plug. It's roundabout on the Post Road. Uh, that's where I got it. <laughs> so, if you want some good stuff. Is there any symbolic? I'm just curious if your culture was any what attracted you to it. Uh, there... you know, I'm a, I seem to be an embroidery freak. I don't know. I seem to love embroidery. I, maybe it has to do with some of the clothing that uh, you know harken back. Right. But I love embroidery and I like the colors. So that's why uh, I gave myself a present and I bought bought this for myself. 
I, sometimes I, I like to do anagrams of the person's name. Sometimes it gives away, so, so I, you, know, you scramble your letter. Yeah, yeah. And the only one that made sense that I came up with was like lace smell. <laughs> That's funny, Do you because like, lace does have some smell. You, does it? Yeah, now you know what, uh, my uncle and my father had a lace business. That's, well, that's kind of that's, funny. That's pretty revealing. So, like, but lace does. Um, there was another question I was going to ask later about fabrics and the things you use in mm -hmm. your work. Is there more to it than the visual? Is there? It must be tactile and also have a, a smell to it, like a um, the smell of embroidery or cloth. I don't know. I, I think that may have. You know, my mother was kind of uh, elegant. She had good taste. And um, my father had was they were had this French lace business, uh, so they would import uh, really gorgeous stuff uh, from France. And uh, so it was in the house all the time. You know, we, he'd bring home stuff and uh, very elegant and beautifully made material. So I think that we always had fabric around. I mean, it was mm. just part. It was the fabric of the household <laughs> in, in a way. So lace was, it's so funny that you. Yeah, those are your, the letters from your name. That's so weird. Daddy like was, lace smell. Okay. <laughs> that's weird. Um, oh, well, that's the title. Okay, here's some early work. Um, mm -hmm. The one on the left is kind of scary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> the one on, now that is the f first series that I, um, that I did after I left graduate school, you know, I was painting and whatnot. And then I made a total switch. And I was very interested in what motivates people and um, what is really going on psychologically. And what I did was I felt fear is one of the most important uh, emotions that we have. And so I, I thought about it, and it's often inculcated in, in early childhood. So that particular series, The Roots of Terror, is. Uh, a kind of like a projection of what the child's fear mm. is. So the whole series is, um, is scary. I don't think they're scary, but everybody else does. So, uh, but, it, you know, they're, they're hard hitting to some. That, did, that series won the New York Foundation for the Arts Award in drawing. Did it come, do you have nightmares? I mean, had, did you have nightmares as a kid? No, I have very nightmares? vivid dreams, but I don't yeah. have nightmares. Yeah. You know, I'm awake when I think of this. <laughs> <laughs> Which is worse. That's even worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, these are, see, the, so they, they kind of are related. Mm. So the, the one before was um, the first one out of, out of the, uh, the spooky ones. And then this is, a, I, I would make all the frames for these pieces. So the frames were uh, like commentators on the subject of the piece. So they would be central and the frames would be, as I said, secondary commentary. You know, these wax, uh, you know, lips and ears or, or molds or how did you the, What the, uh, I used to get, um, I used to, you know, I still, shop everywhere and pick up weird things. And, a dozen uh, ears, a dozen lips. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. So, <laughs> so what's an ear between people? Um, so no, those were those, they were rubber, they're rubber. Oh. And um, I just bought a whole bunch of different things. And uh, this piece is called Silent Strain. And it's kind of ambiguous because she's, she's almost pushing you away, but she's also putting her hand up to her ear. So it's a, a, a mm. it's like a double kind of con uh, concept. And, and it's you. It's a self-portrait, right? Yeah, yeah, I used myself, yeah. not because it was me, but I was there most of the time. So, <laughs> <laughs> so most of the time. Uh, so I would just use myself as an every person. I'm not yeah. sure what. Oh, that one is the Golden Mead series. So that figure is sitting on the gold, most golden egg because there's only eleven eggs oh, there, oh, so yeah. she's metaphorically, that's some lace, that's lace in the, so I painted that lace gold. And this was kind of like Wedgwood, you know, like the idea of Rococo mm -hmm. or red, red Wedgwood. And then I started using some of the lace as a kind of see-through. Uh, so that's uh, actually a Xerox of one of the lace patterns over, uh, behind the drawing. They hang from the ceiling. So 
I mean, this is, if you can't tell, there's teeth. What, I mean, this is what's striking to me. It's such a beautiful thing, and then it's embedded with kind of yes. dread. Some yeah, dread, it, right? that's exactly yeah. what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Um, because, and I, what I did was with this series, um, the truncated series, and then there's a, there's a, simil, uh, a subset called, um, I told you I was going to forget. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so I started drawing on the, on the sculptures, because I, I do sculpture and I do drawing and painting and whatever else. So I wanted, the, 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 sub, the titles of these, at least the prelude title, is Tattooed Lady, and then they each have a different, because there's mm. five or six pieces in this particular group. And I wanted the tattoos, quote unquote, to be a surface, flat, even though they look kind of, you know, tactile, uh, but it's almost like appearance and reality. So the sculpture being three-dimensional was the reality. And the flat work was the sh face you show to the world, um, or what, you know, mm -hmm. it's, that it's a mask. It was masking what was really going on. So a lot of those pieces are like that. So you went to Queens College? And I went to Queens You got a master's? So did you learn all these disciplines? I mean, you work with you know, sculpture and painting mm -hmm. and collage and fabrics and beading. And mm -hmm. So is this all these things you just found on your, you mastered on your own or? Um, well, I, I studied painting and sculpture. Yeah. Uh, at that time, they wanted you to choose when you went to graduate school. Like you couldn't paint and sculpt, you had to choose. So I went for sculpture first and then I switched to painting. But nowadays it's completely different. Now it's all interdisciplinary. You know, you, you can, you know, it's sound and dance and, you know, installation is exactly the opposite of what we were, um, mm. you know, the path that they gave us. Uh, and I did wood sculpture, I did all kinds of things. Uh, but I taught myself to cast, which is what this, I sculpted that body. So these are family? Pictures. This okay. is your, the Fez people. Yeah, yeah. these are the <laughs> these are the Fez people. Do, they, do women wear fezes? This is a silly question. Do women wear fezes? It's just for men. Women. It depended on the region. They would wear like little little fezes, but mostly it was a patriarchal kind of a thing. I mean, men wore fezes most of the time, and the fez has a big history in it of itself because it was outlawed and it was first encouraged. Uh, by the Ottoman Empire, and then later on it was banned by the, it was all political stuff. Um, but mostly, I mean, most men uh, wore a fez cap, either turbans or a fez cap, um, and uh, our, that's my Uncle Ezra wearing one. This is the sh one of the shops, my, my father's father's shop in, in Bombay, Mumbai. And uh, there he is wearing, that's my grandfather there, wearing a fez cap. So th I noticed that these are, they're just, they're unadorned. In your later pictures, we'll see, they're heavily adorned. Yeah, they're heavily but adorned. But they're not in the real... No, 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 they're, they're usually very plain. Just plain? Sometimes they have a tassel. Uh, a lot of the time they have a tassel. Um, Does it, you know, <laughs> you know how people wear an earring on the right or the uh -huh. left, does it matter which side the tassels are? I, uh, I have no idea about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have no, there might be some significance to where the tassels are. Oh. You mean like graduation? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You turn it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have no yeah. idea, but uh, Muslims, Christians, and Jews wore oh, they, as cats. Oh. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, kind of... So here's the adorned, uh, some that are heavily, ad yeah. well, adorned with... With the fe with, now this is the same piece. Uh, that's the piece on this pedestal. Oh, okay. So that started. There was a show called Silent Witnesses, and uh, uh, they were about synagogues that were either abandoned, destroyed, or whatnot. So I wanted to do a piece, and I started with this. And uh, what I did was on the face of the fez cap, I. Uh, these are all digital pieces. I started using the um, Photoshop. Um, that's my father as a boy, and in the synagogue that they went to. Uh, but the women used to be relegated to the upper floors. You know, they weren't. There's a woman up there. That's my mother. Uh, 
And oh. around the whole Fez camp is a story, the idea of, you know, the boys could be the, the holy areas and the women are not allowed to, to be there. So... Um, it's just a, this patriarchal yeah, hierarchy, right? Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. kind of... I mean, that's how I read it. Yeah. I mean, most of our females, you know, read it that way. Um, so that's what... The, now, that tassel isn't a, one of the tassels that you'd find no. on a regular Fez cap. That's... Uh, uh, this, on a Jewish prayer shawl, you'd have something called tzitzit. Uh, the, those, and they're knotted in a particular way. Mm -hmm. So this is a Sephardic-style knot. So instead of the tassel, I put the, uh, the, the tzitzit there instead. So this is the first piece of the whole series from 2012. Mm. Oh, even the way you present them on the pedestal, I mean, it's so formal and so uh, it gives them such uh, sort of power, you know. Thank you. I mean, there's the way they're... And they're small, so position. I wanted them yeah. to have some uh, presence, presence. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the right word. And so this is the second one. This one... This one and another one have been traveling for four years um, in a very interesting show called Tradition Interrupted. Um, and uh, that, that Hebrew, and one of our, you knew what, it's, what it said, right? Um, it basically, <laughs> it's, it's an excerpt. It's an excerpt from a morning prayer. Uh, and it says, uh, basically, thank God for not making me a woman. Um, that we were having an interesting discussion because there was two ways of looking at that in terms of the male responsibilities and the women's responsibilities, but in this day and age, it doesn't fly that well. <laughs> um, so uh, the reason they're adorned is because there's, they're like metaphorical. So that is like a concealment, but it's also like armor. Uh, so they have multiple meetings mm. in the pieces and I used the braid instead of a, 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 a tassel uh, for the idea of a harem girl uh. you know so that's why I used the braid instead of uh, what normally would be that that is the synagogue that my mother that's my mother actually. Oh. the synagogue yeah. in the fort in Bombay that uh, my mother's family attended was she, did she live to see your artistic achievements, your mother? You know, she was, or? no, she died in 2000. Well, she saw some of that, hmm. you know, because I've been doing this too long. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, she saw many but, of them, but she died in 2004, so. Did she, was her reaction, did she have a reaction? Was it kind of like? No, she it, didn't was have it, a. It wasn't upsetting or, or either, I mean, obviously, I would assume she would be was proud, but did she understand what you were? trying to say, or um, where it came from? She probably did, but, uh, mm. you know, uh, she was getting older and older. Mm. So um, it was, you know, things were getting more difficult as she got older. But she was very proud. Actually, when I was young, I was always painting and drawing. And then when I got into school, and I was also in music, so she would say to me, um, I notice you're not doing your art. You need to do your art. <laughs> oh. So uh, she she was very artistic. So I think she you know oh. was very proud of the fact that I was you know kind of following in, you know her lead. Right. I should say. <laughs> now this one is also with the other one traveling in that tradition interrupted show. Um, this one is really about the male domination with other males. So um, this tells a story as you go around the, the piece. So my father is very young and fresh uh, in the front of the piece, but as he deals with his older brother, who is very maniacal, uh, he ends up being um, pretty disillusioned and much older. So I made the figure of my uncle much larger than him because in, you know, in ancient stele and whatnot, the powerful figure is always big and the uh, subservient one is small. So I use that tactic in, in this piece also. And where, you know, the stand, I don't know, it's not really a pedestal, but the stand, where do you find these? Be, I, do, <laughs> and you... And there's a, that consignment shop that is <laughs> next to the Balducci's. I got that from there. I just happened to be lucky. You know, I just walked in and... and yeah, uh, there it well, was. I mean, it physically elevates them. Yeah. And then it just... It goes with it. Yeah, yeah. it goes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, it I was, I'm just lucky with that kind of thing. 
Um, I wish I had luck like that. <laughs> Seem to have had a lot of it. This one is, you know, we were all three girls. And since girls weren't really legitimate unless they married, you know, that was a big thing mm. in that culture. Uh, and we were like a big schmear, like we, we were close, but it was almost like we were they imposed closeness on us. And uh, I don't know that we did what don't differentiate it in their eyes, in my parents' or the family's eyes, because mm. we were girls. So that's why this one is called smear tactics. I purposely oh. smeared that. Oh, yeah. Well, the it's okay. supposed to look like that because we're smeared like, uh, like uh, you know, we don't exist. As, right. But on the Yarmulke top, uh, I put us, uh, we each have two slots, and I put us in separate segments. So that's, we have something. That's looking there. down on it? That's on the, yeah, you know, the very top. Yeah. You can see that? And it's a mm -hmm. Yarmulke. Oh. And uh, that's, at least I gave them some, some segment of, privacy and, and not schmearism. <laughs> schmearism. <laughs> so uh, to give them some efficacy. That's just an offshoot of the one you saw earlier. It's mm -hmm. a small piece. He's called a magic carpet ride. Those are other family members. The, two, the woman in the middle is my mother, but that's an aunt and that's her mother's sister. No, this tapestry or whatever, mm -hmm. how, well, it's did paper. You, did you create it? No, I, I buy the, I buy a lot of handmade paper. Yeah. And then I um, found a, an elephant stamp and uh, I was able to stamp a gold. And then those are um, Jewish stars. You can find them and, and, and you iron them on. Okay. And then I, I painted them. Because it looks embroidered. I mean, it looks yeah. very rich. Yeah. Uh, it, it, the, the, um, it's like a stamped paper with those gold, uh, copper coins. But mm. I stamped on the elephants. Um, and what do the little knotted tassels mean? Oh, those, they just got them from the locals. Okay. But I mean, they're I not. gave the idea of the Middle East. Okay, but I mean, they're, they're not loose tassels, they're knotted. Is there any particular... No, no, this has thing? no significance okay, okay. other than it just being... Or, or, <laughs> your you know, your tassels know, are in a knot. A bolstery <laughs> or something. Okay. Yeah. But it had a flavor, like, it had a flavor of the Middle East. Right, you know? okay. <laughs> now, this one, it's the same thing with these tassels. They, they, they don't mean anything. <laughs> I mean, they have no more meaning. Uh, this one is a combination of paper, ribbon, that was a, uh, an evening bag. You see the thing, it looked like a turban to me. Oh, yeah. So I bought the evening bag and split it up. Uh, behind those are uh, little, tiny little pieces of uh, sari that I got from the V&A. I was at the V&A and they were selling these. So I collect all kinds of stuff. And then this piece is, of course, the young man is a central figure, you know, prominent. And all the women are kind of relegated like satellites to the mm. side. And uh, it's called Little Maharaja. Um, again, with the idea of uh, the males being much more important. Has that women. culture changed at all? I mean... You know, so, uh, I think so probably to some degree because they're much more... You know, they're in London, they're in, in uh, mm. uh, the United States, they're in Canada, Australia. I think they're probably uh, much more modern. And some families in, the, in our family were more modern than others. You know, it's just a matter of what you're inculcated with and what you learn mm -hmm. and see at home. So that's what, the, you know, my father and my, you know, they had certain, there were those unspoken rules. Like if, the, if there was no Queens College free education, we would not have gone to college. Oh. Because he didn't say, you know, my father didn't save anything for us to go. Because it wasn't for women or girls. Money troubles and uh, it wasn't for women. It mm. wasn't a priority. They figured you get married because that's oh. what they came from. You know, but we're in the middle of the 60s. Mm. You know, a big social change here. So, you know, it was really <laughs> one old world and one foot in the old world and one foot in the young world. I and mean, even though they were considered modern, my parents, mm -hmm. compared to some of the others in, uh, in India, you know, it depended that they were of a more modern and then it just gets more modern. But I think these ideas are subconsciously stamped 
onto the psyche, and then they just keep perpetuating somehow. It might be more subtle. Yeah, it's generational, I guess. But yeah. Did, did your father? I mean, I'm just wondering if you're already influenced. I mean, it's very powerful and it's personal. Thank you. And the, the interesting thing is usually things that are so personal people can't relate to because, well, that's your story. I don't know what you're talking about. Right. But, but these are so relatable. I don't know. No, that's and, good to hear. I'm glad well, I can't hear. explain it because that's not my yeah. culture or upbringing, obviously. But they're, first of all, initially, they're just visually beautiful. Oh, so there's you. that. And then you get into the, all the details and the... Uh, and, and the materials, and then the mess. I think then you work your way into, into the, the messaging. messaging. Yeah. Um, but anyway, the, so I guess the question was, did any of this artwork you think impact your family's thinking? Uh, you know, your, you, ever, do you ever hear feedback from them? Going, I think the women kind of get it. Yeah. Because even you know, even my co oh, my cousins and their fathers or whatever were, uh, you know, still of that thinking. You know, a little more modern, a little more modern, but still with the thinking that they're, you know, the be all end all. And I remember during, I, when I was, when I got married, uh, my father was, uh, he did, did beautiful chanting and whatnot, and everybody loved him. He was like one of those charismatic <laughs> types. And um, he was giving a speech, you know, a talk. And so he talked about his family because he loved his, you know, his family was fantastic. Right, so he just, he started listing all the people of accomplishment in the family, and of course they were all men. Mm. He didn't say a thing about the females. It was just like, this guy does this, and I, what my wonderful nephew that, and my wonderful nephew has, you know, whatever. And they were all men, and I never forgot that, but it was, it's, it's, it's subconscious. They, they, they don't know the difference, Yeah, you know. Okay, so um, this was actually done in response to, um, there was an, uh, an open call about um, a show about um, curses. Curses? <laughs> curses, okay. Jewish curses. <laughs> um, but uh, I did this, which is not, not a typical kind of you know, Jewish curse. <laughs> um, this, that's my mother again. But this, there was a story, we have a lot of stories. So there's a story um, about this woman, the, the, a relative, who was married to the guy with the fez cap, the old man with the fez cap. Um, there's a lot of stories about her. She didn't have a good life. But anyway, she was angry at my mother's father because her, her husband had a, a piece of the business that they had, the fez caps. He passed away, that's a story, but I'm not gonna tell you <laughs> that, but that was really a story. Um, she wanted a piece of the business and my grandfather said no. And uh, so what she did was, in order to, you know, to really dig in, she said, she cursed my mother that she wasn't gonna get married. Oh. And that was like the biggest, you know, the worst thing you could do, you know, a woman not getting married, <gasps> how horrible. <laughs> so I have her, she gets increasingly menacing as she goes. Is she the around. ghost image in the yeah, back? Yeah, the ghost image yeah. in the back. And as as it goes, let's see, my mother's head is turning. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so uh, uh. and as she gets uh, progressively around the picture, my mother triumphs, I suppose, as uh, being married. And uh, that's what that story is. <sighs> that's wild. Yeah. So with this middle thing, it looks like a surveillance photo. Okay, what is this that? was the synagogue in the fort, in, in my mother's synagogue. Mm. We went, to, you know, I went to India a few years ago. Uh, they refurbished the synagogue. So this, the tiling on the floor mm. is the oh. same design uh, in the background. Oh, I see. And that half window, that trellisy kind of window there, yeah. is the same design uh, that holds the images. So I just doubled it and used that design. And they look like little They're eyeballs. They're Sumerian eyes. They what? Sumerian oh, eyes. Oh, Sumerian eyes, yeah, okay. For the sculptures. Uh. So oh, I use that. that. You know, and they also have a few evil eyes there. So when you give someone a curse, do you know how they, I mean, do they do like, you know, do they make a the, gesture? Having an evil, ha I don't know if she had made a gesture, but um, 
the evil eye is big in a lot of cultures. Mm. But the evil eye is really big, you know, in that culture. Yeah. Right? So, you know, you have to The really stink eye. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, Italians have, you know, a yeah, lot yeah. of different cultures have it. No. So, yeah, it was, it's still big, the evil <laughs> eye. <laughs> this one is called Marriage Turban Fest to Have and to Hold. It really talks about the the hold that the male has on the family. And of course, like I said, we were all girls. So on a, in a way, they feel obligated to take care of the women, you know, monetarily and whatnot. They're not married. But in this piece, that, that's a piece of French lace. That's a French lace mantilla that comes from Lyon. And um, the, the people around the base of the, uh, the bridal veil uh, my mother again, and us as children, then as a little bit older, and uh, then the last group are we're adolescents, but we never get beyond adolescence. And we're all attached to this turban, which also has evil eyes on it. It does? There's, yeah, there's evil eyes on this. Oh, I see. oh down the edge? Yeah. And the sits yeah. it, again, those uh, uh, prayer shawl tassels, are coming down from the side of the turban, and they're also on the edges of the, of the, oh, yeah. of the uh, veil, of the veil. All this is that, you know, the digital stuff takes forever. I mean, you probably know. I mean, it's very complicated. And it's printed on the fabric? It's printed on, on the, the still, yeah. this is Transferred still. or printed or? It's printed, print, yeah. yeah. And then I have to sew it all. I have to figure out how I'm gonna do all that, you know. <laughs> I just say, you know, figure it out. Okay, useless females don't stand there like a decoration. Okay, so my father could be very abusive. I mean, he was like uh, um, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. He really was. Hmm. He was very charming and sweet and had a good, very good nature, but he had these outbursts. Anyway, he used to call us useless females sometimes in his anger. And then uh, he used to say, don't stand there like a like a decoration, meaning you're not producing somehow. Uh, so that's what this is. And those are Kathy's legs. <laughs> those are Kathy's legs. Okay. For uh, I forced her to let me use her legs. What, did you cast them? Or? Yeah, I oh. cast her legs. <laughs> we had Chinese food. Uh, <laughs> uh, so she was nice enough to let me do that because it was really kind of torturous, I think. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Oh, th that's all paper. You know, the golden and yellow was all paper. I had to oh. figure out how to... You make, wrapped? Uh, uh, well, I had to match. Oh, yeah. So I had to figure out how to do that. You know, like, so everything's a challenge. That tray was from a London trip. I knew I needed a tray, and when I walked into this uh, uh, consignment place, that tray showed up. So I took it home. <laughs> so uh, I just things come to me, uh, that, uh, just lucky. Just, but do you, sometimes something attracts you and you're not sure how you're going to use I, it yet? I buy it. Oh. Uh, now I have too much stuff, so I'm not going to buy anything more unless it's fantastic. Uh, that was a cushion. That was a, um, the fez cap and all, you see the pearls and the stuff? Hmm. It was, a, it was oh. a cushion. Uh, I just took it apart and added it to the fez cap. Incredible. Wow. And again, this one is, again, useless females. Then he used to tell us, don't stand there like a bloody Momo. And uh, we'd look at each other like, okay, first of all, you couldn't say anything because you had to let the tirade pass. Um, but then we'd look at each other like, what the hell is a Momo? <laughs> you know? mm. And uh, so I looked it up recently, and not that long ago. And uh, at first I thought there was a Hindi word. I think there is a Hindi word somewhere along the line, Momo. But in, he was in the army in America. And then I read that it's slang for a moron. Hmm. So he, hmm. they must have said that in the army at oh. that time. So um, anyway, it was very charming. Uh, <laughs> so uh, these are, you know, uh, just kind of Middle Eastern looking slippers and I slipped us into, that's me and Joy, my sister Joy. Uh -huh. um, it, 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 taken from that other piece. Uh, so we're kind of melding into the Indian material, Indian garbs that the women from the other uh, piece he just showed. Uh, we're kind of melding into that. Is and that 
I'm hmm? sorry. No, I was, was going to ask if that was paper, too. Any, any that's that's paper. paper. The yellow is paper. Yeah. The green is paper. And uh, the other things are trim. And there's, we're looking at each other like, what the heck is he talking about? <laughs> yeah. and, uh, I put turbans on our heads. I put Middle Eastern gear on our heads. Uh -huh. And uh, I, uh, around this, it says, what is a Momo in... They look like Hebrew letters, yeah. but it's, it's really English. Oh, oh yeah, I can, oh, right, so it's just a shape. Uh, oh, yeah, it's, so. now that I see it, what is a moment? Okay. I mean, would there be consequences if you went back home and wore a, an, a heavily decorated fez, or people just look at you strangely? What I don't think anyone would look at you. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, they're all gone. Most of them are gone yeah. in India. Oh. You know, they started leaving when the um, British left, uh, or maybe even before then. But then my cousins, a lot of them went to Australia because they were looking for people at that time uh, to, to man, you know, to, what is the word, to people uh, the, the country. Uh, so they all either went to London or they went to, some went to Australia. They left. A couple of them stayed. Um, and now the neighborhood that my father grew up in is all Muslim, basically Muslim. Mm. Um, I, went, I went to India, but I was only there for about eight days. So uh, I was with my cousin, so it was very interesting. The place we had dinner at used to be my uncle's sh uh, leather shop. Uh. It's now it was a Chinese restaurant or something. It's very strange. At least it wasn't a Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um. This one is a, a kind of funny. Um, I kind of turned it on its head and I turned the um, the fez caps into kind of bra breast boo. Yeah, yeah. That, like uh, like pasties. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's and, interesting. Um, dismiss is to diss someone. Mm. So to dismiss and let. The, the writing is like that, let the small me entertain you, the big you, um, is to signify how, you know, the secondary nature. And here they are all dancing, smiling, like, you know, uh, like dolls. Uh, yeah. Like dolls, yeah. And, uh, I like the way she's so elongated. Her gown is... Yeah, yeah, that, uh, yeah, I just elongated. Because also the... the um, structure of these, you have to figure that out. You have to figure out how much this is going to be and how wide it is. And it's, it's not just like sewing. Not that I'm a great sewer. Uh, but it, there's a lot of planning that takes, you know, mm. takes place. Most artists have that. Uh, and uh, I have to figure out how's this going to work, how's this going to show, where is this supposed to be. And, uh, and they take me a long time. I'm not fast. Oh, well, they're so intricate. I mean, it, it looks... Yeah, thank you. But it, it does take me a long time. Plus, I was working oh. the whole time. You mean, oh, teaching at the time? Teaching, yeah. yeah. And you know how early we had to be there. <laughs> and then trying to go to openings and stuff at, the, at night. So yeah. It was tiring. So this, these are one of the newer ones. Um, this is actually going to be shown in Brooklyn starting next week with a, at a group show. And uh, this one was at MOCA, the Westport MOCA, mm -hmm. for a camp gallery. It had um, the women, women, I can't remember the name of it. It was about the women weaving the threads of social justice kind of thing. So um, that is a sari that I got from India, the, the upper part. Mm -hmm. But I, I fashioned it like a, there's a Tunisian male robe at the Met, um, they have a beautiful collection of, of clothing. And it looks like that. So I purposely designed it like that. And then from underneath, I have those harem girls, but they actually, their fists are like this. Oh. Uh, They're uh, uh, defiant. Uh, so I, I put the fists all around the, like a wreath-like Oh, that's area. the motif, those little blue things are yeah, fists. Yeah, okay, yeah. And doesn't, at the right, base yeah. of it, there's two fists, but it almost looks like they're shackled. Yes. Yeah, yeah so, it, you know, there's that dichotomy there. Um, so that's what this piece is called. Instead of rough road, it's rough robe. <laughs> <laughs> and I think there's one more piece after this. Is there, okay. Oh, no, there are these, I forgot. Um, anyway, the, the, uh, I was reading about the um, 
the Mesopot she was Mesopotamian queen of Ur. Well, they think she's a queen, but they're not sure if she was a queen or a priestess. But she was of some high level um, called, so they call her Queen Puabi. Actually, the, the crown is all is at the Penn Museum in Philadelphia. So that inspired me um, because we're really from, I had my DNA done. And we're really from um, like uh, either the Caucasus and the Middle East. And I have very little else in my DNA. And my father used to say all the time, we're from a Babylon, Babylon, we're from, you know, Mesopotamia. So uh, what I did was I, I wanted to use that idea, that metaphor, as um, to, to bring dignity and importance to all women, meaning I'm using that as a metaphor, the Queen Puabi idea, uh, to, to bring dignity and power and importance to all women. So that's what, there's another one, actually. Oh, there it is. Mm -hmm. um, so I, you know, I use the people from my family because they're, they're all old photographs. And they all, except for the one of me, and that was hazy. I have to make them look, I mean, that's the biggest point. They, it took forever to make their faces look at least clear enough to see. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot of challenges, and a lot of those clothes are mine. I put them together like a, a collage. Uh, that the back, that's a dress, that's a pair of pants behind <laughs> me, that's a rug on my bedroom, and that's another uh, piece of uh, fabric, Indian fabric. And I, I, so I put all that together, and again, it, every little tiny little thing you have to check for, because you might have overlapped something, or didn't see that something was attaching or, or there's some shadow there or some crazy thing. So uh, anyway, these are digital prints you saw. Mm -hmm. And then these are converted into the next, I think the next slide, which is, yeah. So this is one of the most recent piece that I finished. Um, I'm gonna turn this way if I can. So that, um, the upper part, maybe I turn this way. <laughs> the upper part of this piece, I had a, you know, I collect things, so I had this fantastic piece of, of fabric, the upper part. And um, what I had, what I wanted to do was, that thing over there was printed on a piece of poly satin. So, and I had to match all the, you know, the, the same shape and the same size as the, Tattersall kind of a geometric in the upper part. So finally, I was able to put that together and I made that crown of all disparate parts. Um, it's really very funny actually. And that's the front of it. Yeah, but again, I'm doing this off the, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. So I mean, I kind of know what I'm doing. Yeah, but. well, it's because <laughs> it comes from that place, it's so original because if you knew totally what you're doing and pick something out of a book that's been done before, yeah, but yeah, it's all. But in terms of the, I had to make the, you know, the pattern, which ended up being having to fix, and uh, all kinds of, you know, you, look, any artist will come up with any kind, you know, up against problems. And uh, that we're problem solvers. Mm. So, you know, you just kind of figure right. what the hell did I do, and let me figure something else <laughs> out. <Right. laughs> problem so, makers, most of us. But. <laughs> so this is the is last that, Oh, that was the last slide, yeah, okay. This is the last one um, that I've done. So I guess we have time for a few questions, but I had one more sort of uh, off-topic question. Was this all your work, you know, it's, it's meaningful, it's serious, it's profound, but so we kind of imagine you, you know, brooding all day and, you know, all the wringing your hands. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you do for, what makes you laugh? What do you do? What's your guilty pleasure? Do you have any? You know, that's a good question. Like you um, watch reruns of Gilgan's Island or something? Uh, <laughs> uh, Resident Alien. Oh, yeah? I've been, oh. I've been watching that. Um, uh, you know, I like the art, so like I'll, I took myself to Turin, though, the other day. Uh, so that's one of my guilty pleasures, or, or going to a play, or going to the... I mean, that's not guilty, going to the yeah. museum, or, sure. or the galleries, or uh, whatever else is... 
is uh, out there. You're not binge watching any, well, Resident Aliens a series, but you binge watch any? No, Resident Alien is fun. He's yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah, he's really wonderful. <laughs> um, uh, it is serious. There's a lot of serious on Oh, yeah. Um, but uh, the Twilight Zone, <laughs> the crown. Yeah, you oh, know, okay. I don't watch much comedy. Most comedy I don't think is funny. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh. you know, and I also, what I do is I also work at night, you know, I, I'm be beginning to shift my schedule, so mm. I li I'm a little bit of a workaholic, I like it, so uh, even if it's administration, so I do that maybe into the nighttime, and then I'll just maybe either listen while I'm doing, like while I'm sewing or taking, mm. I'll listen. Uh, or I'll just take the last hour off and uh, just put on something or, or do something else. I'm, you know, I'm kind of like working, so. Okay. So with any <laughs> questions? I think we have any time questions? for a few. Mm -hmm. any... Oh, do you have to come out? I'm sorry, you have to, please, because this is being recorded. No. Oh, I can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, I'll repeat. So. So I have to repeat that because for the video. Um, so we talked about your mom being supportive and your father steeped in his ancient uh, <laughs> attitudes towards women. Um, did he ever come around and, and see your, you know, see your talent? And uh, yeah, no, he was very proud of us. Um, my my oldest sister had a beautiful mezzo soprano voice, gorgeous. Uh, so she studied, uh, you know, uh, as in Brooklyn College because we didn't. So she studied opera, and Joy was a magnificent pianist, also very scholarly. My second sister. Uh, no, he was proud of us. So, but you see, it was. It, it, he would say, "Oh, when the Escal girls come, everybody's gonna, you know, j drop down, and, you know, see how wonderful they are." And the next minute, we were like useless females. It was very erratic. So, uh, no, he loved us, and he was, he was proud of us, but almost, I think it's almost as if we were extensions of him or them. We were an extension of them, and if that's just old-world thinking. Yeah, I just think it's just part of uh, a lot of old-world cult old cultures, and they don't move away from each other, <laughs> you know? It's very southern kind of way of, of thinking. Anything else? <laughs> okay, so the question, I have to repeat it. The question was, some of the pictures are very old, so what technique did you use to bring them, bring back the vibrancy of the old photos? It is so mixed. Uh, there's no one technique, because in Photoshop, a lot of it is, let me try this, let me try that, let me try. So, um, they have... A new, something now called neural filters. They didn't have them not long ago. So I had to, I would make double images and erase. So uh, I would use a, um, a hard pass to make it sharper. But sometimes I'd have to double that and then take out the stuff I didn't want. And so the lips might be more clear, the eyes might be more clear. Uh, so uh, that, the neural filters are just, they don't really work that well. They change people the way they yeah. look. I mean, you can colorize a black and white photo. Yeah. It does a pretty good job, but no, yeah, no. Didn't. But it's it's better than the oh, well. I did. It, I used to hand, you know do it the old way. Oh yeah. Um, on on the older pieces, I did it the old the old colorizing. Uh, now it's got the neural filter mm. for for colorizing. It can makes me people smile, but it's it's so artificial. It just all it does is. <laughs> You know, push your corners of your mouth up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's you a, can't really, <laughs> it's usable only up to a point. It changes the person's face. Yeah. Uh, so it takes so much manipulation. Uh, on the news piece that I'm doing now, which is not here, uh, that took me the most time in order to make her face. It was my mother's face, but it was very, like, from the 50s. 
so I had to make layer after layer and pass after pass. And then uh, I have probably 15 versions of it because you have to make a, a duplicate and then try something else and make a duplicate. And that's just one. And that was just, small just area one small of area piece, of, yeah. uh, of the piece, you know. Uh, so it, that I wish I could answer you, you know. It's sort of a techie question. But yeah, it's, it, it's a, just yeah, a Jeff. lot of pain in the neck. The images of the women, are those synthesized in Photoshop, or are they images of women wearing clothing like they set on? No, uh, they're all synthesized. So the question was, are the photos of the women synth synth synthesized anyway, you know, adding, um, adding garments and things? Um, no, I'll, t I'll tell you, I'll give you an example. You see the one on the upper, upper right with the pink on? Okay, that's my Aunt Eva, my Aunt Eva. Now the picture is again from the 40s or 30, as she was young then, maybe from the 20s. Um, so I just used the face. And um, I, have a, I have a dressing, you know, those dress forms. So the shawl that she's wearing is a sari that I had. The top that she's wearing was just a short little, you know, like the Indian one. I made her a whole dress out of it. Plus, she didn't have a body. So I had to find arms um, that looked like that. And I put on jewelry, so I put on the jewelry, took a picture of me, and then took the jewelry off that picture and put it on her. Uh, and uh, it, and it, again, it takes a lot of, all kinds of weird things happen when you're doing this. So uh, it's very complicated. And then you have to, you know, that, as I said, that's a rug behind her. So I had to, you know, situate it so she looks like she's going, doing this, which is, you know, kind of fun. Um, so, and then I put the Queen Puabi's from pictures. I put her crown on her and her hair I couldn't get right. So I had to find somebody else's hair <laughs> and put it on her. And then the earrings are also from, you know, the, um, the, the, the stock photos from the museum. So I had to put the earrings on. Everything is, a, is all separate. The one that with me in it, with the, with the green dress, um, it's not a green dress, it's really a gold dress. Uh, I stuck some, uh, I had some satin or some silk satin green. <laughs> and what I did was to get the legs like that. I put like um, uh, paper towel rolls <laughs> and draped the, the, the uh, fabric and the dress over that to make it look like that. <laughs> so you come up with all kinds of funny ways to, you know, to make, uh, make those are my, uh, well, it's a picture of me only had my hand. So I had to take a picture of my arm and uh, it's just all, all pieced together, the whole thing is pieced together. I think the answer to your question, Jeff, nobody is yes. There. <laughs> 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 nobody there except a couple of pieces of, you know, a photo. So all right, well, one more, I think. Yeah. What were the other interpretations of the thank God, what, I'm not a woman? Yeah, yeah. yeah thank God. For, the gentleman, I think it was, it was um, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Uh, he was, uh, he and I were talking earlier, and he was saying in terms of the, the societies and older societies, and don't pay attention to that. Um, that because the men had certain responsibilities in the synagogue and, you know, spiritual responsibilities, the women's uh, realm was the home and the children and the running of the house. And, and that, uh, so in a way, the men, you were saying that it was on an up, they were, that women were guarded on a higher spiritual level, but the men had to do all this a work, and you know, not work, but they had their obligations in the synagogue and, and whatnot uh, in terms of the religion. So, um, so meaning that they, they weren't made a woman because 
they had, uh, I suppose, I hope I'm paraphrasing you right, um, that they had the responsibility and the obligations uh, to, to um, as men, in terms of the spiritual life of the family, community, and whatnot. I hope I'm paraphrasing you right. So, mm hmm Generative, you know, if you use the gener generative AI um, upgrades to Photoshop, but uh, sort of like the neural filters yeah. it just does, yeah. Yeah, I haven't yet because I, j I just got it. Um, but I think when you use those, you have to give them like a one-liner, right? And then it makes some image for you. No, and you, and you keep repeating that. and adding, it's called, you know, your You're prompts and you it. change it. I mean, I don't know if it would work, but you could describe you know, I want a picture of a woman with, and you can you can s upload your, the face you want them to use. Mm -hmm. And I want a woman with her arms on her hips, her hands on her hips, wearing a red satin dress, wearing pink shoes. I mean, you can, it, it'll never come out perfect, but it's a beginning. Yeah, I haven't used it yet because I, I know that they come out strangely. You know, I was, um, I was in this show and uh, part of the thing was, you did an AI version, and then you had your, mm. your, the real artwork. So, and it was only like one sentence you could inf input. So I inputted, I forgot which one I used, but I inputted a, you know, a, wo a woman wearing a t turquoise and gold, the Middle Eastern, blah, 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 you know, whatever. And the first one came out with this, you know, it looks cartoonish, really, you know. Um, a, uh, a Middle Eastern woman with, uh, uh, not the way I envisioned it, but the Middle Eastern woman. Caricatures, really. They, they looked, yeah. You know. And then when we did it again, the woman was black. So, uh, you know, I don't know how that happened. I didn't specify an African-American yeah. or African. Um, but um, the first one, I would have been closer to what I would imagining, but I couldn't find, re reproduce oh, it. Right. I couldn't reproduce the first one. So like, I, you know, we had the second one, I had to give it to this, uh, you know, we use that one instead. So I haven't really, not yet. All right, well, I think we have to end it. And I thank you so much, Camille. This thank great. you, thanks for coming. <laughs> I really appreciate it, thank great you. Great slides.